In these slides, we're going to talk about various types of data here, just rough overview type of thing. So we're going to do various this or that kind of thing. So the first thing we're going to do is quantitative data versus qualitative data. So quantitative data is data that represents a quantity. Um, so we have the quant quant sitting there, so both the prefixes. So generally quantitative data is not data we can add, subtract, um, these kinds of things here. Typically we're going to get a number. Uh, you could just, None of these types of data are going to be extremely well defined at the level we're doing them. So you could start to argue about, well, maybe if I do letters like an A and a G, that there are a certain number of letters apart, and you could kind of say, oh, maybe that's sort of quantitative from a certain point of view. Um, so there's going to be some gray areas here, but generally we're thinking about numbers for quantitative data. Uh, some examples here, you could do height of a person, of an object, of a building, what have you. You could do number of letters in someone's name. You could do temperature in a room outside, you know, your body temperature here. So these would all be quantitative data, things you can add, subtract, multiply, typically those kinds of things. Qualitative data is really that does not represent is data that does not represent a quantity of some sort. So it's more sort of a characteristic that we can't really do number operations with. So examples here, like hair color, um, so if you have red hair or brown hair or black hair or gray hair or what have you, uh, your favorite class, um, so if it's your math class or English class or your history class or whatever, uh, model of car, ethnicity, none of these things are going to sort of lend themselves to being added, subtracted, these kinds of things. Sometimes there are gray areas here, like for instance, hair color. If you went and did a super scientific type of view and viewed the color as some sort of wavelength of light, you might be able to get some sort of quantitative thing there, but that's not normally what we're thinking of. So maybe another way to put this is qualitative data is data we sort of put in categories and that's it. So something you can think about here is what if we do say the seventh digit of someone's phone number. Now that's a number, but I would still say that's qualitative because of that number doesn't really have any numerical meaning. It's not like you would want to add together the seven digits of two phone numbers and that would mean something. It, it's really just a category still. So just because something is a number doesn't make it quantitative. Generally, most things we see that aren't numbers will be qualitative, but it's sort of gray areas here. Um, yeah, so the seven digit phone number, I would say that's qualitative. Another sort of dichotomy or splitting of types of data that we'll deal with is discrete versus continuous. This is a general mathematical thing, discrete versus continuous. Um, so generally we're talking about quantitative data. It can be either discrete or continuous. There's formal mathematical definitions you could give here. We're just going to kind of do this from a rough perspective here. Again, this may create certain gray areas we'll talk about here in a bit. Um, discrete generally means there are gaps in the data. So um, typically, or a lot of times, this means that only whole numbers are allowed. So you're counting the number of something. So if you say the number of students in a class, well, it's not like you can have 3.8 students in a class. It's going to be either 3 or 4. Typically, probably a bigger number than that. Um, so examples here of discrete data, you do number of letters in a name. So again, you can't have 2.3 letters in your name. Okay, you can't split that up. It's got to be whole numbers. Now again, it doesn't have to really be whole numbers. So you could do like shoe size. So typically in the U.S., at least shoe sizes go by halves. So you could be a 9.5 or 9.5, but not a 9.4. So it's still discrete, but your step size instead of being one is really a half here, but still discrete. There's sort of this gap. You can't split the sort of get between a seven and a seven and a half shoe. Um, something else would be discrete, typically is the number of stars given in review. Certain places you could give three and a half stars, but typically they're not going to let you do then three and a third or three and a quarter or three and 13 20 ninths or whatever fraction you want. Typically you're going to do whole number of stars, maybe by halves, depending on what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to think about food, say the number of tacos you eat. You, Presumably we're going to think about the number of tacos I have is a whole number. Now you could argue here, I guess, 
I could take half of a taco, but we're going to say, how many tacos did you get? Think of that as a whole number. Again, that's probably a little bit of a gray area. Continuous data, on the other hand, are things where the gaps sort of fill in as finely as you want them to. So continuous data, the kind of value is going to basically as many decimal places as you like, and it still makes sense in context. So examples here, you could do height. So I could be, you know, maybe in terms of height for a person, I do feet and inches. So a person is five foot 10, five feet, 10 inches tall. Um, but you could be five, so let's see, five feet is 60 inches, so that'd be 70 inches tall. So you could be, instead of 70 inches tall, you could be 69.8362543. And if you had a fine enough measuring stick, you could measure that to as many decimal places as you want. So height we can view as continuous. Um, the number of, or I've got that number of quantity to make you kind of think of whole numbers. Let's say the number of miles walked in a year. Well, I could walk 136.2345 miles. I could go in principle to as many decimal places as I would like there. Uh, I could do time spent watching television. Again, you might kind of think of this in terms of minutes or hours or depending on kind of what frame of mind you're in here. But you really could split this up into I watched television for 37.46254 minutes yesterday. Um, so now another food example I could think of the amount of tomato soup here as opposed to a taco where sort of the there's a unit of one taco, two taco, three taco. You could go and say, well, I want to get tomato soup and you could sort of split that up as finely as you want. And there's no real sort of unit here. So I think of tomato soup as sort of a continuous type of data or the amount of tomato, tomato soup. Okay, so some examples here of discrete or continuous. What if we look at the number of stoplights that are red on your drive home? So you go for some kind of drive and you can say the number of stoplights you hit that happen to be red. We're talking about number of, now I'm going to think of it as either you hit it or you don't. We could define precisely what that means in certain border cases. But I'd say this would have to be a whole number which would make this discrete. On the other hand, if I look at the time spent waiting at all the stoplights on your drive home, well, the time spent could be any kind of fraction of a minute or a second or whatever I'm looking at here for a unit. It could be any type of fraction or decimal, so this is going to be continuous. So we're going to fill that in. This one's probably a little bit stranger here. So if I talk about the dollars you spend on gasoline in a year. Now, I'm going to assume here that for this particular example, it makes sense that maybe you're spending something like $2,000 in gasoline here. Now, on the one hand, this is, I mean, sort of technically discrete. So when we spend money, at least in the US, we spend it to the nearest cent. So it could say I spent $1,938.23, uh, and 23 cents, that'd be $0.23, but I couldn't do $0.237 here. So in a certain sense, that's discrete. Another point of view is, I mean, you split this up, okay, not completely all the way, but pretty close. So the number of categories you'd have to view the discrete is really large here. And from our point of view for this type of course, you could probably make an argument either way here. Um, likely what I'm going to say is what we would do is we would I would view this really as a discrete measurement to the nearest cent or hundredth of a dollar. But when we analyze this in terms of the tools we'll use later on, we'll treat this as a continuous variable here. So I mean, technically probably this is discrete, but we're going to sort of act like a continuous variable. And really what I'm trying to say here is, okay, yeah, I have to go to the nearest cent, but the difference from one set to another is not so big that if I did a half cent in between, it wouldn't be a big deal. Now, that's a little bit different if I'm talking about number of students in a section of a class. Maybe I'm talking about 22 versus 23, and I've got to choose one or the other. And there's maybe, a, you know, sort of a significant difference between 22 and 23 from a certain point of view. So there's gray areas here. Again, we're just trying to get the general idea. Um, yeah, so if we did this discrete here, uh, we'd have gaps of a hundredth of a dollar.